Um, I can recall myself sitting down in front of the mirror and just bawling. For what reason? I don't know. But just did that. Inspiration, education, lifestyle and motivation. Let's go on a journey. Life lessons with Jason. Tell me, are you ready? Hello? Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Life Lessons with Jason. Today we're on location at our set. Let me big up near the corner for the set and welcome home by Kay from the lovely orchid, another one, you see? We're doing big things over here on Life Lessons. Today we have a special guest, as you can see, we have the superstar Megan Tucker with us on Life Lessons today. And listen, I'm gonna get food by the wish looking you know, it's an Olympian right here. It's the 2016 Hurdles National Champion, yeah? So just listen, big things, big things, big things. Thank you for coming on Life Lessons. Thank you for having me. I am so impressed. Like, Ooh. so impressed. Big up yourself, big up your friends. Yeah, talk like you're nice. <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> it's the intro. It's the intro. All right, that's what you're doing. Yeah, it's all about inspiration. Motivation lifestyle. I know you watch, right? You subscribe? Yes. Yes, sure? Absolutely. All right. If you have not subscribed, do so right now. So it's a little bit more into your life about you just to give persons insight on things they don't know. You know, you see on social media, jumping over the hurdles, then always working out, doing those pull up things at the gym, and, you know, looking ripped and all. You and Shelly are hang out. But we don't know much about you beyond those walls. So I, I want to know. No start nice and light. Early stages, growing up for you, what was that like? Um, well, growing up for Megan, I was always a shrink. Always super smart, so people would treat me like a baby. Mm. Um, despite that though, I always felt like I was just normal. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't behave like I was short. I guess mm. that was my inferiority. Oh. My short, short man confidence, I think they call it. I don't know, but I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But let me say, when you're short, you. Mm -hmm. you Tend to have like a big personality. Big personality, make up for your shortness. So that was me, uh, unconsciously, obviously. Uh -huh. um, I actually found out I was this short. Like, I thought I was short. Everybody said, oh, you're so short. But I didn't know I was this short until I was at. I was watching as re watching a race, mm -hmm. and beside me was my six foot tall German competitor who is now a really good friend of mine, Alex. When was this? 2011. 11, okay. In France. In France. Okay, yes. France. The World Youth Games in the finals. Uh -huh. So I was re watching a race, and as I said, she was six foot beside me, and the cameraman was going through everybody. Normal people on the same level, we go up a little bit to come down a little bit, but then he went up for her. And when it was time for me, he went down. And when I expected to see my head, wow. it wasn't there. So he continued to go down. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, <laughs> I am that short. Okay, now I understand why people would constantly say, oh my gosh, you're short. Because I literally didn't understand before. It was a thing where everybody, like, you have short people and you have tall people. But I'm just like, you're, oh. <laughs> you know, you know, everybody can be up there. Like my brother is six four. Ooh. Yeah, man, and I am five eleven. So you know, it's like, you know, like God just give me. <laughs> I mean, you're enough. Like, why you want more? I am enough. Exactly. I like, I like. Yeah. So, um, tracks, hurdles. I tried tracks in high school for a little. Beat everybody. Sorry. <laughs> I tried tracks in about grade 8 for two seconds. Um, one, how did you get involved in tracks? And two, how did you know what if, because if, event, right? Yeah. What event you wanted to do? Because hurdles just not make sense to me. It's just too much jumping. You're just jumping, 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 jumping. Like you're just always jumping. Jumping and running. Yeah. yeah. More jumping and running. But how did you get involved in tracks and then the event turns? It's a long story or a short story? Medium story. Medium story. Yeah. Okay, so how I got into track is my track, my PE coach in prep school because I was always the fastest or the second fastest person. Oh, you always fast? Always fast. Okay. Um, and so obviously he wanted me to be a part of the track team. So mm -hmm. grade two, despite me being a full time gymnast, I said full time because I was doing gymnastics for about four to five hours. So you can fit on the top? Yes, I can. What? 
Go on my Instagram and check it out. Um, but I was a gymnast. I was a full time gymnast, and then he came to me and said, I want to join your team. But running was always my love. Like, I always absolutely loved running. Um, but I was a gymnast. Mm -hmm. He came to me and said, Yo, I want you to be a part of the team. I was like, Okay, I asked my parents. And my mom was like, Eh, because they were focusing on London 2012 for mm -hmm. me to be a gymnast there. Oh. So, Somebody coming to divert that focus is not really that the welcome. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But she's not the type of person to kind of tell me what to do or force me to the area. She just guided me. Yeah. So they allowed me to do the track, especially because I loved it. So that's how I got into track. Mm -hmm. How I got into her is now is in high school. Uh, and I the high school is? Senna High School Program. <laughs> 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 Andrew. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I was always the first one on the block. So I was always the first one on the block and I'd be good for like 60 and then everybody would just pass me like I was non-existent and it got to me because I'm a winner deep yeah. inside. I always want to win. I'm a winner. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, hmm, what can I, what even can I go into maximizing my, maximizing my strengths and not um, having to worry about my weaknesses yeah. and pole vault was not an option at the time because Jamaica really wasn't in pole vault. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't really, uh, um, we, we never got into pole like that mm -hmm. yet. And so the next option was hurdles. In hurdles, you have to get a good start. Uh, you have to be able to catch the, the technique really easily. And you have to kind of have a little foot speed, which I did have. Mm -hmm. So I went to my coach on, on a Monday morning after, after losing a game mm -hmm. at a track meet on Saturday. And I asked him, Can I join? And he's like, Yeah, yeah, go on. Like, you know, the people that were not really fast, not really business mode, but you know, they, they will have sense, yeah. they will make them try something. So that's how that's what I got to do. It's making sense to know. Yeah. Gymnastics, yep. you're flexible, so it's easy for you to just, you know, get over that. And before gym, I was a dancer. Yes. Oh, so you did everything, right? Everything. everything. So interestingly enough, you are a national champion. Yes. 2016 right. hurdles. So is that how you segue into representing Jamaica in Olympics or was that before? No, that was that was how I went to the So you had a meet here? Yes. And your time was? 12.73. That is fast. And then they chose to go overseas to represent the... Once they come top three, mm -hmm. um, barring no issues, you are on the team to the Olympics. Alright, so now, get the uniform, feel nice, fly out. Olympics, what's it like? You're there listening and you're seeing all the different competitors. It's a big area. How do you feel? So Olympics for me was... Uh, <laughs> oh, I can get into it. I get into it. <laughs> it wasn't what I initially expected it to be. So for the trials, 2016, I was mm -hmm. actually coming off of 2015, where at the previous, in 2015, the trials, I... Fell at, I fell off of the last hurdle and actually had to basically crawl to the finish line. In the drop? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But because I watched that video, probably close to when that child was, and I realized that, okay, the, you only lose or you only, you only fail when you give up. I decided, no, even if we didn't pump my face, I forgot you the line. That's, a life, that's a life lesson. Even if we didn't pump my face, you have to go through the line. Wow. So I, I literally ran through the line on my hands because I was like, okay, suppose something happens and I make it to the final, yes. even though I fell. Uh -huh. uh, unfortunately, I did not make it to the final, but I uh, injured myself, not from the crawling through the line, but hitting the hurdle, I injured myself way more than I actually thought. And I couldn't be able, to, I wasn't able to walk the next day wow. on my foot. And so I missed out on the whole summer of going to the world, university games and doing all kind of meets in Europe and stuff like that because I had to stay home with a, I bruised my bone and I had a grade 2 strain in my ankle and I don't know if you guys know but ankle injuries are the hardest things to heal and I don't think they ever truly heal. So that was like, was me, you know? Um, but then, because of that, I had a fire within me. I was going to ask you because some person had been injured and stopped. Yeah. Why didn't you seek to go forward? I mean, because 
there's something in me that just says, Yo, you're destined for more. Aye. There's something it's in me that, that there's. You're destined for more. Yeah. Right? And so, no matter what happens to me, I mean, if you follow me, you know that devastation and unfortunate things are my forte. That's, I mean, it's not my brand, it's not who I am, but it yeah. happens, yeah. you know. But my brand is, I am the overcomer. Um, you know, I am always the person with the help of my support system. If I begin to name out everybody, they pull up the interview, but pick up <laughs> to every single person who supports me. I'm one line sitting to the side right now. Hey, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, with the support of my friends, my family, my mentors, I was able to uh, like blow up on the fire. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the, the fire is there, you know. Let's find it sometimes. But yeah, we'll find it. So yeah. I like it. <laughs> but 2016, I came hard. Strong. You know what I mean? I came hard. And I, I recall a couple of weeks before the trials, uh, my coach at the time would switch. Uh, so we start at the starting line usually, uh -huh. but because of the wind, we'd start at another, we'd start at the finish line so yeah. that the wind doesn't affect us but help us in the uh -huh. And so, uh, I, I realized that when I started at the starting line, my mental was strong, I was fierce, I was running and I was fast, Stop like unstoppable. But when it changed, it was like all oh, my energy was gone. Oh. And I don't know if it's normal, but I'm somebody who does introspection a lot. Mm -hmm. And I realized it, I didn't realize it quickly, but when I noticed that there was a difference in my time, I was like, hmm, something's wrong here, let's try to figure it out. Uh -huh. So diving into it, thinking about it, I realized that because I am used to the starting line, it's like I was able to build up an idea in myself of who I was at that starting line. But once that line moved or once I had to fix myself into a different situation, mm -hmm. it was harder for me to adjust. I didn't just adjust like that. And so I created an alter ego. Mm. So, <laughs> um, alter ego in Jamaica is not really smiling yeah. or looking at Christian or whatever, but it is. We have different, not only schizophrenics have different personalities, but normal people have different personalities as well because you're a different person in your friends, you're a different person in your family, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily bad. Um, so I created an alter ego, which is the lion, um, 2016. Um, I call myself Meg Lion. Meg Lion? Yes, because I was moving into that, you know, kind of vibe where. So kind of like a pocket market or a bold. Yeah, yeah. So. I don't think those are alter egos because they're just fully great. Like, they're just great, hunt up a great, anytime they're But then, <laughs> you're getting there, you're getting I'm there. Getting there. Getting so Meg Lion, no, right you're ah. there. Yes, yes. Are so, there. there's something I want. Something happened at the Olympics. Mm hmm, hmm. are we talking about it? Alright, so how many stages do you have before you get to the final race? Three. Three. Oh, two. two. You have the heats, the heats, and finals. Semis and finals. So you did the heats, shell it. Time for the semis now. What happened? Alright, so <laughs> um, I have my support system, but for some reason, you know, you can have a million people around you, but you still feel lonely. You still feel like you need something mm -hmm. that's not there. And that's how I felt at the time. Um, I kind of calm myself sitting down in front of the mirror and just bawling. For what reason? I just did that. Wow. <laughs> and I realized that later on, thinking about it, I realized that I didn't feel like I was worthy of being where I was. Wow. I'm at Olympics, right? I am. You made it. I made it. But yeah. was I supposed to make it? Because at the trials, national champion and the world champion the year before we fell. Mm -hmm. you know? So even though it wasn't something on my mind consciously, it, 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 it looked that. like it was eating away at me unconsciously. I didn't feel like I was, uh, it was my place to be there. And as uh -huh. a result, I did not just go there and do what I, I can do, I could do. Because if I just did that, I mean, I probably would have made that finals, you know, or, or, or something else. Because the heat was good. The heat were good. The heat were good. And if I just like if I just executed my race without all that fear, mm -hmm. I mean, the sky would, would have been a limit for me. So, so, what happened mentally? What happened in your mind when you were in that room waiting for the call to go out? What really happened, though? Um, I feel like my. I feel like it was. What was we were talking about? 
Yeah, I feel like I was an imposter. I was an imposter there, and I didn't belong. deserve to be there. I didn't belong. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if athletes move through that a lot, mm -hmm. but it's something that I mean, if you are, if you don't have a strong sense of who you are, there you go. it can eat away at you and take away your energy, take mm -hmm. away the light, take away your light, um, and it should be addressed in every circle, to be honest. So, coming from that now, um, I, I love your story because it is so relatable. You know, you would have seen my video talking about my, um, my fair share of the notes in myself. <laughs> but um, the, the important thing about your story is you speak openly about it and you're in a better space now because I know that you're supposed to be going to some meet sometime soon. I don't know if you can speak about that right now. <laughs> yeah, but, but mentally, how did, you how did you change your mind to coming from the, the Olympics? How did you change that? I mean, for me, I recall you saying that you, yes, yes, me? yes, I recall and I was so impressed and it kind of changed my mentality because I have, I have this thing where I kind of rely on people mm -hmm. instead of just finding the strength within me. Yeah. And when you said, you know what, I know I am here because I deserve to be here. I am here because no, you said it. I did. Yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. And you basically boost of your own self. You know what I mean? Um, and and but that's not what I did to get where mm -hmm. where I am now. I seek sought the help. I continue to seek the help of people around me, my support system, mm -hmm. my trusted people who I know that like you and I call upon, like my mother-in-law, my mother, my aunt, uh, my mentor, my husband, I call upon them who look in my eye and tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And sometimes it helps to hear it from other people other than your support system because sometimes you feel like they're just telling you that they want you to feel yeah. nice. Um, so other people coming to me, like random people coming to me and saying, you know, you're going to make it. Yeah. You know, you are worth it. You are, you are worth it. it. You are, worth you are it. enough. Ooh. You know, those things are what come to where I'm. So, we're at that point now. Life lessons. I want you to look at the camera. Speak to... <laughs> speak to the viewers and just drop some life lessons. Life lessons. Life yeah. lessons. From your experience. Okay. So, first so, you are struggling with doubt. Mm -hmm. Persons who are in traps who want to do it but don't see themselves worthy enough, you know, what would you say to that person? What would you tell them? Okay, we as humans are born at a hundred percent. We are taught and we are socialized to believe that we need more, that we're born at 60 and mm -hmm. we need to fill our cup to a hundred. Mm -hmm. Well no, we are born at a hundred percent and anything else we gain in this life is brought up. Wow. So you're born enough. I was born enough. Wow. We were born enough. And all we do now is just the extra. So you don't have to you're not you're not trying to build up or fill your cup because your cup is already it's full. full. Hey. You know what I mean? And this is so I heard that in 2019 mm -hmm. and I understood it. I understood it, but it never settled in me. And it wasn't until this week that it settled. I was, I'm always looking forward to being who I know I can be mm -hmm. instead of being me. Wow. You know? Wow. And. Listen, listen <laughs> guys, if you are here, like the camera crew, then everybody <laughs> have goosebumps now because we can't believe what's going on. But it's some true stuff. It's true stuff. I really feel like I was put here to go through all this to be able to tell someone else and bring them through as well. Because nothing gives me more joy than seeing somebody not only own their truth and be who they are, but know that they're enough. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and smile because I said something that could help them. Wow. You know what I mean? And so I feel like that coupled with my experiences mm -hmm. put together. Man, I couldn't understand in 2017 why my journey was riddled with so many different issues like trouble and whatever. But then I was listening to Pastor Jakes, mm -hmm. T.D. Jakes, and he said, there's no way that a person can 
responsibly look on people and try to teach them something they've never been through. Hmm. Jesus came on earth. I'm sorry if you're not a Christian. Talk to them. <laughs> Talk to them. But Jesus came on earth in human form so that we could go to God and say, yo, you can't tell me how I feel. Mm-hmm. He, you can't tell me how I feel because you've never been me. You've never had these experiences. You've never walked on earth. So he walked it. He lived it. He lived it. He showed us. He showed us. Wow. <laughs> and so, That's it right there. without these struggles that I'm going through, people who might have looked at me and said, you know, I hear you, you're making sense, but who are you to tell me? You know, nobody can say that. Hey, you are enough. <laughs> you are enough. Oh, it was so lovely having you here. Oh God, thank you so much for your part of Life Lessons. Thank you for tuning in. And once again, before we go, let me say a big up to Dear and the Crow for the amazing set. Ooh, look at this guy, and they were so professional in doing it. Oh, oh. Flourish. My beard <laughs> is courtesy of Flourish. You see that beard right there? That's Flourish. And welcome home by K for the Orchid. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. And stay tuned. We might have something else coming for you. So before you go, subscribe, like, share, and turn on the notification bell so that you can see when another video drops. You were tuned into Life Lessons with Jason. Jason. All right, guys. Inspiration, education, lifestyle, and motivation. Let's go on a journey. Life Lessons with Jason. Hello?